If you've been looking for a way to get out of your reading glasses, well, I got my hands on the newest eye drop Viz, and I'm going to try it out for the first time on camera today. So keep watching. Hello everyone, I am Dr. Rupa Wong, board certified ophthalmologist practicing in Honolulu, Hawaii for the last 17 years. And today I am talking about something that you might really feel in your bones. I am 49 years old and as a consequence, I need these. Yep, my readers, to be able to look at pretty much anything up close, even with my text size really large on my phone, I still need my readers. So if you are 40, 45 years old, and you are noticing you need readers all the way up until 100, then this video is for you. As much as I love these readers and how sparkly they are, they are such a pain to wear constantly. And I would do anything to get rid of those reading glasses. So I was really excited when news about Viz hit. New eye drop that is supposed to help get rid of reading glasses. Now you might think this sounds really familiar. Wasn't there an eye drop before? Yes, there was. That one was called Viewity and I've tried that on camera as well about four years ago. Didn't quite live up to all its hype and we're hoping that Viz is gonna be different. So I paid the $79 to get this eye drop right away so I could try it. So in today's video, we're gonna be talking about what is Viz, how does it work? I'm gonna be putting it in my eyes and give you my real world, in time, real life testimony as to does it actually help with presbyopia. Presbyopia is just the need for reading glasses as you get older. As we get older, unfortunately, like everything in our body, it starts to lose elasticity. What does? The diaphragm that holds the lens does not contract. That ciliary muscle just doesn't contract and change shape the way that it used to. The lens undergoes a lot of changes and that lens is what helps focus the light onto your retina. So as you get older, we lose that ability to focus up close and that's called presbyopia. It affects everyone. Yes, even you, if you are a 20 year old who doesn't wear glasses and you think I will never need that, that was me. I am 49 years old and until the last probably two years, I never needed to wear glasses. Didn't need LASIK, didn't need contacts, didn't need any of it. Perfect 20 over 15 vision to see far away and up close. So that's why needing reading glasses has been a lot more heartbreaking for me than probably other people because it's just not something that I was used to. Plus the fact that my entire world as an ophthalmologist is up close. So currently I'll either wear my beautiful readers or sometimes I'll even wear contact lenses to see up close. So how is Viz any different from the previous eye drop that was out four or five years ago? Viz works by a similar yet little bit more specific mechanism. Viewity, the previous eye drop, is pilocarpine. That's a drop that's been around for a long time, decades. And we've always known that it helps constrict your pupil. And both of these eye drops work by the same mechanism. They make your pupil size smaller to take advantage of what's called the pinhole effect. By making the pupil size smaller, they're able to shift the light so that you can focus more and read. Now, this is a little bit different than other eye drops in that it is selective for the pupil and it is supposed to be ciliary muscle sparing. What does that even mean? Well, there are muscarinic receptors, and these are the specific types of receptors that are on the iris lens diaphragm. It's basically the structure in your eye which changes shape. We want to avoid having an eye drop that works there because when you use those eye drops that also work on that iris lens diaphragm, what it does is it can make you more nearsighted for far away. Obviously not ideal if you're trying to use an eye drop to read, but now you can't see far away. It's gonna cause a lot of problems. The other thing is some people also remark about brow ache. And for people that are very nearsighted, it can cause retinal tears or detachments. That's the other drop. That's pilocarpine. Now, this is not pilocarpine. It's acyclidine. It's a very specific type of eye drop that supposedly only targets the pupil, the iris sphincter, the muscle, the colored part of your eyes called the iris. And it's actually a muscle. It helps change the shape of the pupil. That is its purpose. So when you are targeting the iris, it's going to make it contract more and make your pupils small. 
Now, this is reason number one that I'm not so sure that this is actually gonna work for me. If you take a look, my pupil is extremely small. It already is about one to two millimeters. I have very, very tiny pupils. And likely, that's the reason I've been able to get to 48, 49 without needing reading glasses continuously earlier in my 40s. Because my pupil's so small, I've been able to take advantage of that pinhole effect. So I don't know if this is actually going to do anything for me because I already have a small pupil, but that's the mechanism by which it works. The other thing that's interesting about this is that in the trials, they looked at people 45 to 75, which is a much larger range than the previous eye trial. In addition, they looked at people who'd had LASIK, who'd had cataract surgery, who'd had PRK, and to see if it worked for them. The other eye drop, the pilocarpine version, only looked at a really tight range of ages and did not specify if people had cataract surgery or if they'd had any kind of LASIK. So this is really interesting for those of you out there who might have had LASIK and now you're 45 or 50 or even 65 and you wanna see if this is gonna work for you. So it comes in this little box. One thing that they tout a lot about in the marketing is that it doesn't have BAK. Now BAK is benzyl alconium chloride. It is a preservative that's thought to be really toxic to the corneal epithelium. And if you're using this drop twice a day, every single day, you don't want something that's going to start to cause a lot of really terrible dry eyes because that's gonna make your vision worse too. So this does not have BAK comes in these preservative-free vials. If you take any other preservative-free eye drops or other preservative-free drops. Okay, so that's what it looks like. Put my readers on. There we go. So I can actually see it. Now in the studies, what they found is that about 60 to 75% of people got three lines are better when reading up close. So we have a near card when you come into the eye doctor's office and we will have you read called Jager points with a J and you will be J1 plus is 20, 20, J1 is 20 over 25, and the higher the J number, the worse your vision is for up close. So it's not like reading the distance chart, but it's a reading card. So what you're supposed to do is put a drop in each eye, and then after two minutes, put a second drop in. The other thing is they tested it on people who were nearsighted all the way up to people who had plus prescriptions. Now, technically, I might now fall on outside of that range of plus prescription because I am a plus 150 for distance, which has happened with age. Again, never needing glasses when I was young, but I could focus through that plus one and a half. And they only looked at minus four to plus 100 with astigmatism. Now my optometrist used this drop the other day and it made her eyes very, very red. The redness is only supposed to last an hour, but you guys will see how long it lasts. Okay, let's put the drop in. Okay, it does not sting that much. I should probably have not put mascara on. <laughs> now it's supposed to take 20 minutes to take effect. I'm going to go help my kids with their homework. I will check back in 20 minutes. Set a timer. Hey Siri, set a timer for 20 minutes. Curious to know if I'll be able to decrease my font size or not need those readers. Hi, I'm back. This is an 18 hour update after I used the eye drop last night. If you're planning on using this, I have a couple recommendations for you so that maybe you don't experience the side effects I did. First, I used the drop at 4 p.m. last night and that dimness was substantial. In the studies, they said it was temporary. It lasted until I went to bed, which was about six hours. And at nighttime, it's really profound. I felt like all of the lights were on 50%. It was really hard to navigate, so much so that I didn't feel safe driving at night to go pick up my daughter and her friend from cheer practice. Made my husband do it. If you're using the eye drop, definitely use it in the morning. First thing when you wake up, it does seem to have a really nice long effect, which is what you want for an eye drop that's gonna help you read but it's not something you wanna be putting in in the late afternoon because it does last till nighttime. Second, I put the eye drop in both eyes. That was what was recommended on the box. Instead, because of that dimness, and I really, really hated the dimming effect, it was really awful. And I'm not sure if that's just because it was at night. I'm willing to try it again, but I would only use it in one eye and use it in the non-dominant eye. If you don't know what that means, People do this all the time for monovision contact lenses or even monovision cataract surgery where they 
will correct one eye for distance and one eye for up close. Typically, you're going to keep your one eye for distance is going to be your dominant eye. One of the easiest ways to figure out if your which eye is your dominant eye, put your hands in a triangle, make it very small, focus on something far away, and then see when you are still looking at the object through that little, we call it a puka in Hawaii, the little opening there, which eye do you naturally gravitate towards Would you, when you bring it to your face? For me, my left eye is my distance dominant eye. So I'm going to put the eye drop in the right eye only. For some people, monovision makes them really nauseated and very dizzy. And if that's the case, obviously all of these things you need to be checking with your eye doctor, not just taking advice online, but that's an option as well. Third thing, the box does say to use the drop twice, which is what I did, separated by about two minutes. I did that. If you feel like the dimming would really bother you, you might want to just try it one drop, just one time in the eye, see what kind of effect that you get. Then maybe the next day do it the twice and see if, if you don't get the full effect that you want. I did get five lines of braiding. It definitely was able to help me, but it wasn't at the 20 minute mark. It really took until about 60 minutes later that I saw the effect. So I was surprised. I could read my son's AP chemistry. I could read, you know, watch my iPad. I could read email. I could read text messages, but the dimming was terrible. And because of the dimming, I'm very hesitant to try it again, but I would be willing to do it probably just earlier in the day, try it with just one drop in my non-dominant eye and see how much that helps. Hope that helps. If you've tried this, I'd love to know. Drop it in the comments below. Please tell me also how old you are because that does help a guide other people, what your prescription is, if you're a plus 175 like me, if you're a minus 400, and whether or not you've had cataract surgery or LASIK in the past. Those three things will just help other people find in the comments, hey, this might work for them. I hope this video was helpful. If you did find it so, please like, heart, and subscribe. And also I read all the comments, so please let me know what other video topics you are interested in seeing. Until next time, I'm Dr. Rupa. Bye for now.